All right, what's up, y'all? It's like a fan here. As we're about to tell today's video, I'm here to showcase the most unstoppable dribble pull up in NBA 2K23. Now, this rivals even the Trey Young fade that you can only get as a small guard, the six fives and under. And I really do believe that this is going to be one that's going to really take over the game. And it's the new season four Tyler Hero dribble pull up. So I'm going to be showcasing that in today's video on my new shooting build that has 85 three pointer silver agent three. So this should be plenty doable for most of you guys watching. I'm assuming most of you probably have around 81 to 83 three pointer, 83 being exact what you need for that silver agent 3 85 being the silver limitless range but generally you're not shooting fades from that deep anyway but nonetheless i hope you guys enjoy the video if you do for the drop a like sub if you do so i'm noties all that good stuff and like always try to want 2000 likes so you can see we're gonna break a lot of these down i just want you guys to see the motion and just the beauty of it as well so we got that tyler hero fade now my player is left-handed keep that in mind because obviously as a lot of you guys know by this point the fades are very much so determined based on your dominant ball hand and then your like offhand so to say so what i mean by dominant ball hand is just whatever the dominant hand is so for my players left-handed and as you can see when i fade to the left it is this rise up extremely fast fade paired with the sadiq bay uppers that i have on it as well and i do believe uppers completely change your fading speed as well but on top of that even still the dribble pull up animation is extremely important for that and as you can see we're gonna let this play out it's so fast and it rises up so quick now i've been told by a couple of my teammates from ak to zeke that it's a pretty ugly fade and it doesn't look good i don't care i want the fastest stuff possible and this right here truly is fast and it does rise up at a really good height as well in my opinion which obviously helps even more with negating contests on top of that now you're not going to see another fade until a little bit later in the game. I have a, a little bit more gameplay to still show you guys. As you can see, I'm learning a little bit as far as how I want to dribble on this build. And also, I did mention in the other videos, I was planning to do a lot of these snatchbacks right here. I saw some people asking about it in the comments. To do this, you have to have moving step back on James Harden. And all you have to do when you're sprinting down the court is just flick down on your right stick right here. So you're sprinting, you're moving your left stick forward, and then you flick your right stick down. And it'll just snatch back, and you'll be able to shoot off that if you would like. You can even run off it in case someone maybe contests you way too tight off of it as well. So there's multiple different options. Now, albeit I miss a slightly right there. I still have to learn a lot of my timings and stuff like that. What I have been working on, though, is obviously the standstill jump shots and the left-hand fade. So again, left-handed player, left-hand fade is kind of what I resort to. Right here, though, you can see a nice basic quick drop. We do have the double slash take on. I did mention in other videos, too, that I don't really plan to really three-hunt way too hard. I want to still have my typical rim run style, and this will translate to Pro-Am as well, in case, obviously, some of you guys didn't know. I do plan to have another alternative lineup different than the one that we already run currently that I want to use this build for as a point guard shooting guard kind of role beautiful bounce pass by the way by Denton right there that was super crazy but anyway we're gonna go ahead and fast forward a little bit through the rest of this game I want you guys to see the fades that we're gonna showcase all right so I hit tonic on a couple pick and pops that's where a lot of these assists that you're gonna see in the box score end up from and then also tonics like three pointers as well but again in case anybody doesn't know and you want to know how to guard me on this new build take away left side it's about as simple as that i don't feel comfortable yet with the right side fade not to mention that the right side fade is quite a bit slower to be honest it's not exactly the greatest but it is still hittable it's just i have to understand the timing speed and stuff like that and obviously me hopping on the build two days ago and literally starting the build four days ago is not exactly the easiest to just come out here and just be great off rip but nonetheless you can see a little snatch back we're setting up to move to the left and as you can see rising up and fading so quickly it's such a beautiful beautiful shot in my opinion hey maybe one man's trash another man's treasure i think this looks fire and it's so quick it, when you feel it and you really shoot this yourself you will see how unbelievably fast it is when you're really in the possession of it in your own hands but anyway we have the next shot as well being showcased with that fade and i mean like i said this is laker fan of all people you can see what i captioned this as you can see a fade so easy even laker fan can use it and i think that's kind of my ploy on a lot of the shooting stuff that i'm gonna be making for the videos is obviously i haven't been on a shooting belt all year now i'm just hopping on it day one like my first couple of days with it and it is a pretty easy thing to learn i think the the tobias harris base with sadiq bay uppers that i'm that i've been on right here is pretty easy to learn not to mention this tyler hero fade right here <laughs> once again i mean you could see just how easy it is to get a fade off at any given moment this really rivals in my opinion the trey young fade for the small guards look at how easy it is to get that shot off and albeit yes i do understand like this isn't the greatest defender i'm going against or anything like that but he is not lagging behind me that far and as you can see i just run to the side the fade pulls me into the animation and you rise up and get the ball out of your hands almost instantly this is a ridiculous fade right here and i really do believe the speed of it is something that will definitely change the meta as far as what people are running for their dribble pull-ups on the six foot nine six foot eight type builds even for that matter you could even throw this on with whoever you want 
And we'll get to the requirements in just a second, but as you can see, end the game 3 for 4 from 3, missed that one on the snatchback standstill, so as far as the fades go, I was 3 for 3 in this game, and again, I don't have that much practice with this stuff, you guys, if you're a natural shooter compared to me, who I, like I said, have for the last 7 years, probably taken a total of maybe a thousand jump shots, honestly, and, and as far as 7 years, that's a very small size, as far as my, like, substance, essentially, but... Anyway, 3 for 3 from fading that game, 11 points, had that one dunk as well. And now I just want to recap some things. So we're going to go into the Prime Arena real quick after showcasing this animation and just show you kind of what it looks like essentially and give you a couple of looks at what it's going to look like if depending on your jump shot and just the multiple different timings that you would have to deal with from front fades to side fades to your dominant ball hand to the off hand and stuff like that as well. Even just like running back to the three point line. Just want to showcase a couple of looks at what it essentially looks like. Now, I'm not going to guarantee I make them all. <laughs> Obviously, I don't have the timing down to a T 100%. But as you can see, the Tyler Hero fade, you have to be at least under 610. So even small guards could run this if you really would like. I think this absolutely does rival the Trey Young fade. As you can see, even if it were on this player, does it really look that different as far as the speed and the timing? So like you can see it played out on this player right here. And obviously the thing that Trey Young fade has going for it at the most, in my opinion, is that it's very usable fading left and right, no matter what your ball hand is or anything like that. Not to mention that you can let go of your sprint while shooting it. Now with anything that's for the bigs and stuff like that, most of these fades are more so meant for still holding your sprint now i don't think it's that big a deal but as you can see any fake that is moving to the left is extremely fast anything moving to the right though is a little bit suspect but i mean you can see man when the movement is going left this thing gets out the hand quick it is super super quick and rises up really high as well now i've been playing around with a lot of these i couldn't find anything that's even close to as fast besides normal 2 and normal 2 has the exact same issue where it's really good to your dominant ball hand but then to the off hand is really really slow and really bad i actually think this one is significantly worse to the off hand than the tyler hero even still is and i don't know i just wasn't as big a fan of the normal 2 and then obviously with it new being a new season release i wanted to try it and if you guys would like the jump shot to pair with it just to get the exact same timing as me i'm not one to just sit here and gatekeep jumpers or anything like that and tell you to go watch my other video if you would like to know my jump shot, here it is. We got the Tobias Harris base, the Sadiq Bay uppers. It's the fastest thing you can possibly get. I was told another base, and let me go find it real quick. All right, so I went back and checked the comments of my jump shot video, and they actually showed that Tari Eason, or if that's how you pronounce his name right here, is the fastest jump shot possible in the game. But as you can see, the three-point requirement of it is a 79, even paired with the Sadiq Bay uppers, and the release height is a C plus as well. Pairing the Tobias Harris base, the Sadiq uppers, in my opinion, is quite a bit better, where it's not significantly fast. It's about like one third of a letter grade, aka the difference from an A to an A plus between the Tari Easton and then the Tobias Harris as far as the speed goes. But as the height, as you can see, goes from a C plus to an A minus. So I really do believe that's quite a bit more important. You definitely want some height on your jump shot to negate the contest. And I believe this is probably the best jump shot in the game as far as like just going for the 6-9 wings. And as you can see, I created the build specifically to get this three point rating to be able to get this. I was labbing this stuff really, really hard before even creating the build. And just wanted to make sure I crossed all the T's, dotted all the I's, just made sure that everything was set as far as what I wanted to make before actually creating it, so I had everything figured out. Now, really quick, to, show, to showcase you guys the build, a lot of people were hating on the block rating being super low. That's a, whole, that's a whole different video and the one that I actually just posted yesterday if you want to check that out. But this is what we're looking at right now, 96 as far as the overall, 87 ball handle. I got pretty much everything exactly where I need it now, and I'm just working on core badges at this point. I got to get that catch and shoot core. I, this is an absolute pain in my career. Career. everything else has been plenty fine as far as the my career grind clamp breaker was actually super easy i just threw it to hall of fame and just was running into people simple as that and boom clamp breaker was good i'm getting close to the rebound chaser as well which will go such a long way for getting that challenger on gold and then i'll be able to just run clamps interceptor and then probably take off workhorse probably to like bronze or silver i'll be able to run silver glove as well and pretty much everything that i want honestly all right so for anybody who doesn't already know in my opinion the 5v5 or 3v3 pro Am arena is the best place to practice your dribble moves jump shot whatever the case may be it's really good for labbing obviously there's no my court next gen unfortunately so this is where we kind of have to resort to and it works plenty fine but anyway as far as what you want to look for with the fades in my opinion this is one that is definitely a little bit more like utilizable toward the side now this might look like a really goofy video coming from me because i don't really know what to explain to you guys besides literally just the side fades because i have this one down to a t to be honest with you it's a really really easy timing to get used to once you get the hang of it it's a lot faster than anything you're probably used to beforehand though so just keep that in mind but again, moving to the right side, aka your offhand, I don't have the timing down on this at all. I mean, it's definitely going to use some work. I'm not going to sit here and say it's unusable. It's not like a super unreliable amount of speed, but it's something that definitely is going to take a little bit more getting used to. But as you can see, the significance of the difference of timing is ridiculous when you compare it to, for instance, 
this speed right here. It's like so much faster. Now, as far as the front fades go, I'm not a big front fade kind of guy, but this one to the left hand is still extremely fast, as you can see. Like, it's really, really tough to time, even for my own sake, because I obviously don't have the repetition down on it. And yeah, like I said, I don't really have the best advice to give you guys. I don't know how you really initiate like the fastest fade, because as you can see, that one right there, it kind of glided me into my left side a little bit too much, and I wasn't really anticipating for that to happen. What I want to do when I front fade is kind of just hug that three point line like right there. That's exactly what I'm shooting for. And it appears maybe if your feet click on the three point line a little bit more, that's how you initiate it. Not to mention, by the way, when you fade to the corner, it seems to be a little bit faster as well. Like that one is a little bit tougher to time. Interesting how many whites go in <laughs> nowadays in the game too, by the way. Looks like Laker fan picked the perfect time to start shooting the ball. Cause I tell you what, some of these whites have been dropping in the park and rec. But anyway, again, I just wanted to make a couple notes right here. So corners, they speed up the fade by a little bit. The left hand, AKA the dominant ball hand. So whatever your hand this is for your player, if you're right-handed, it's gonna be good for the right side. If you're left-handed, it's gonna be good for the left side. And then additionally, like I said, you don't really wanna to do too much of this offhand fading. It's a really, really hard timing to get compared to the other side. And that's the one unfortunate thing about the fade is you're a little bit one dimensional when it comes to the releases. I mean, this is a tough, tough timing to get. And you know, I would showcase what it looks like in the mid range, but obviously I have a 45 mid range rating right now. It's gonna be the last thing I get up on this build, unfortunately, and it will be nice to actually get that. I will grind the hot zones as well. I'm sure it's at least hittable still at a 71 mid range. And it's not gonna be the end of the world. It's not gonna be a shot I'm exactly looking to or resorting to that often though, but I will have probably like bronze mini magician on, something like that. But anyway, just wanted to give you guys a good look at what the Tyler Hero fade looks like for the new season four at a novice level. Again, me as a shooter is about as novice as it gets. I literally am like about four months behind the majority of you when it comes to shooting the ball if you played this game since day one. So it's really, <laughs> if Laker fan can do it, you can do it. I promise you. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, for the drop a like, sub, so if you're new to the notice, all that good stuff. And like always, try one of 2,000 likes. If you made it to the end of the video, put fade or put Tyler in the comments. Search parts made all the way through. Anyway, that's all. I hope you guys enjoyed and stay tuned for more. I'm not exactly sure how many videos more I want to post about this build in a row. I would like to get back to some comp pro-am stuff. And like I said, with the comp pro-am stuff, I do plan to be on my pure inside 6'9 still because I don't think this really fits the way I want to play pro-am. It doesn't have the defense that I really prefer when it comes to playing as the comp pro-am team. I'm still going to have a secondary team that this player is the point guard or shooting guard for. And I'm going to run like two ball handlers essentially while still having tonic on the wing with a seven foot min wingspan like 92 three-pointer it's gonna be a fun second alternative team but just keep in mind don't get it twisted i am planning to run two different styles and this build is not overtaking my main build when it comes to the comp pro am scene so anyway stay tuned for more of that and other than that hope you guys enjoyed take easy man peace